Are we rolling? Are we rolling? We're rolling. Okay. <clears throat> I would like to welcome you to um, this course on eh, six. Ethics is another way of talking about human morality. Now, some people don't think of it in those terms. They think animals. I want to bring you into the wonderful world of ethics through giving you four different kinds of systems. The first system I want to bring you into is called egoism. The second one I want to bring you into is called the divine command theory. The, the next one I want to bring you into is called virtue ethics. And the last one is called utilitarianism. That's one big honking word. So here's how the systems kind of work. The first one has to do with self-interest. The second one has to do with, looks pretty obvious, the divine. So if God says it, you're supposed to do it. The next one has to do with virtue. In other words, you need to be a pretty good person in order to make proper ethical decisions. And the last one has to do with sort of the greatest good for the greatest number. And in here, I'm going to bring in the legal system. Now, even though they are different systems, and people might have different outcomes regarding, you know, whatever system they're using, given a particular dilemma, even though that's the case, and they can intermingle, that's important too. There's one thing, one thing that they all seem to have in common. And it looks something like this. You're gonna have to make a little bit of a decision here. You know, you think you might have to make a decision, but you might not actually have to make a decision. I mean, you could just kinda like roll with it, let things play out the way they're going to anyway. Now, you realize not to make a decision is to make a decision, you know that. and. You want to do the right thing. The right thing? Who's to say what the right thing is? Right, wrong, who created all that anyway? Look, what you need to do is take care of yourself. Let this just play. Look, you know deep down what the right thing is. You don't want anyone to get hurt, and you want to feel good about yourself. So, do the right thing. Do unto others. Oh, really, do unto others. Do unto others before they do unto you. That's what I say. Here's what you need to do need to get yourself a nice beer, sit down, have a nap, and take it easy. Okay, look, if you're not gonna listen to me, call Larry. He'll talk some sense into you. Dude, don't call Larry, call David. Go out and do some clubbing. Get rid of all this ethics stuff. Call Larry. Call David. Larry. David. David. So I called Larry and I called David. No help, because both of them said, could you give us an example? I need a dilemma. make the effort to find whoever lost that money. Her first step is to go into the bank and to hand it over to the teller. Should she keep it? The law doesn't answer that question with a yes or a no. Anyone in their right mind would keep the money. It's only $200. That doesn't, that's nothing. Whoever lost it obviously has already written it off. Nobody's gonna go looking for it. Even if you tried to find who owned it, how would you even go about that? Put up a sign that says, hey, did you lose $200? Anyone would respond to that. Obviously you keep the money. It's your lucky day, you know? Just do something that makes you happy with it. The question is a moral question, which deals with the moral law. And coming from a religious perspective, the moral law is based on God's commandments. In the book of Exodus, we see that, uh, among many others, 
God gave Moses and the Israelite people 10 main commandments. And these 10 commandments have formed the basis for the majority of moral reflection by theologians since then. The idea is that God commands something and this command is in accord with our nature. That is to say, uh, we were made for something, we were meant for something, and if we follow these commandments, then we will find fulfillment and happiness and uh, paradoxically freedom. And if we don't follow the commandments, then we'll be enslaved in our own sin. I think one of the things that's remarkable about, about virtue ethics is that it doesn't begin with how to act, but it begins with what we are. So long before you, you ask, gosh, you, you found X, Y, or Z sitting on the ground, uh, what should you do with it? Before that, you have to say, well, you should have already been forming good habits. Good habits, these virtues. Uh, what is a virtue? What is a virtue? Uh, the virtue is the mean between two extremes of action between two extremes of virtue. What is happiness and how do you get it? Aristotle answers this way in the Nicomachean Ethics. He says, he says that happiness is right living habitually. Right living habitually. And how do you get it? By having those, those virtues, those good habits that lend themselves to acting well in each situation. And in this case, the woman, if she were to pocket the money, has misapprehended her happiness. She loses out on a political virtue. That political virtue stands on the, on the mid of two extremes. The first, uh, where she's entirely self-serving. She's only interesting in answering her own needs. The other extreme is where she's entirely other-serving where she loses all sense of herself and no longer can possess what would be called magnanimity. Somewhere between the two of those is, is equitability, where she, where she acts not only out of the interests of herself, but also for all those else that she's in relation with in the, in the body politic. The law is the cornerstone of civilization. It's the framework of civilization as well. It organizes our expectations of one another that, so that the potential chaos of conflicting individual ethical philosophies won't fracture our communities and our civilization. People are driven by emotion and by self-interest. Law is driven by the societal need to promote and enforce basic elements of mutual respect sufficiently to approximate a balance of all people's self-interests. In a case of found money, the applicable laws shape an approach that will balance the streetwise finders keepers philosophy with the more empathetic instinct to seek protection against unwittingly losing something a person has worked hard to earn. The law looks at who the person is what the set of circumstances is that that person brings to the situation and um, what their intention is and what created the situation in order to answer the question. So there is no simple yes or no answer to that question. Law is driven by the societal need to promote and enforce basic elements of mutual respect sufficiently to approximate a balance of all people's self-interests. Uh, the virtue is the mean between two extremes of action. If we follow these commandments, then we will find fulfillment and happiness and uh, paradoxically freedom. Obviously you keep the money, it's your lucky day, you know, just do something that makes you happy with it. So there it is, the four systems. And as we see, when we apply them to a particular dilemma, sometimes the outcome's a little different. And the crucial question is, what's your system?